There are things that piss me off, and then there are things that royally piss me off. And this is one of those things that royally pisses me off. YouTube is screwing with me on copyright issues. I have one problem where a content ID claim I have a license to the media, but from a different company. It's a problem where the composer licensed it to two companies. Mine has the first ASCAP reg registration and the other one's second, but, you know, they just, I, that, that's neither here nor there. The bigger problem is this. I have a video that I'm currently going through a DMCA thing with. So there was a DMCA takedown filed and YouTube accepted it and took down my video. Now, I expected that to happen and then I would file my DMCA counter notification and everything would be fine with the world. So just, it, it really makes me angry because they have rejected, at this point they've rejected two of them. I filed a third one. Um, the third one is about as basic as it gets because of the way it was rejected, which you won't believe. I've also sent an email to YouTube copyright, um, or to YouTube legal support team asking, what's your problem? Huh? And uh, to Team YouTube on Twitter, both a DM and a tweet. I'm not going to hear anything back for a day, I'm sure, given when this is. But here's what pisses me off. Everything is in the counter notification that is required by both the law of the DMCA and by YouTube's own forms. They say you have to have certain elements in the counter notification for it to be processed. Well, they're there. They're there. In fact, I'll show you one of them, uh, or both of them. Look, so let's let's actually, let me go and pull up the actual law first. Uh, you know, and the problem is I actually closed that window, I believe. But uh, one of these days I'll get that window back open. Hold on, I'm so sorry about this. 17 USC 512, yes, I'm such a loser that I know the DMCA's actual statute code. So here, this is the law. This is the DMCA. This, uh, go away. Um, under here, it's the part that matters is this, 15, 17 USC 512G. Uh, one, no liability for taking down generally. This is where it says you can do a takedown notice uh, exception. So look here. Paragraph one, which is the liability, whatever, shall not apply with respect to material uh, um, unless the service provider takes reasonable steps promptly to notify the subscriber that it has removed or disabled access to material. That's what they did. <clears throat> B. Upon receipt of a counter notification described in paragraph 3, promptly provides the person who provided the notification under the su un I'm sorry, under subsection C1C with a copy and informs the person that will be replace the removed material or cease disabling access in 10 business days and replaces the removed material uh, not less than 10, but more, no more than 14 business days following the receipt of the counter notice unless basically they say they're filing suit. Um, so the person would have to indicate that they are actually going to sue me to keep the material down. And that's the end game because they're in Australia. They're not going to sue me. Um, I Actually, I have cause of action to sue them, but it's a pain in the ass. I haven't decided whether I'll do it or not. Now, here's the problem. Counter notification described in paragraph 3. Contents of counter notification. Uh, this is the important part. To be effective, it must provide... Um, a physical or, or electronic signature of the subscriber, that's obvious, identification of the material that has been removed or to which access has been disabled, and the location at which the material appeared before it was removed or access to it was disabled. That's the URL. A statement under penalty of perjury that the subscriber has a good faith belief the material, material was removed or disabled as a result of mistake or mis identification of the material to be removed or disabled. Basically, you know, either... They, they made an error, or they thought it was something else, or it falls under fair use. The subscriber's name, address, telephone number, and a statement that the subscriber consents to the jurisdiction of the federal district. This is just boilerplate. I mean, it's pretty much, um, it's, it's just boilerplate. And that the subscriber will accept service of process from the person who provided notification uh, or an agent of such person. Yeah, basically just saying that you submit to the court. So, which is kind of required for, you know, legal things. So this is all. A signature, identification, a statement that it was removed as a result of mistake or misidentification, and name, address, and telephone number.
So that is what we've got. Now, it occurs to me I probably should not actually show you the content of the email since it does contain my home address and everything. Not that it's a big secret, but you know, why put it out there like that? So in the first one, which was a little long, I say... I have a good faith belief that the material in the above URLs that was removed and disabled as a result of the notice of infringement was a result of mistake or misidentification of the material. Um, and that is really all that's required. I don't have to say that it's fair use. I just have to say that it's a mistake or misidentification. I also make a couple of other claims in there. Um, uh, I consent to the jurisdiction. I swear under penalty of perjury. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, I've, I've done that several times at this point. So all the elements are there in the first one. So the second one, I made a lot shorter. I just said this content falls under the fair use exception of U.S. copyright law. It is heavily modified for the purposes of commentary, criticism, and parody. I swear under penalty of perjury, I consent to the jurisdiction. It's got the name of the uploader. It's got the video included. It's pretty much the most basic response that you can get. Um, and that was also rejected. And let me read you the rejection. Because, you know, if you're a normal human being, you probably will understand what I'm talking about here. But let's see what YouTube thinks. With the thing that says, this falls under the fair use exception, here's all your boilerplate, exactly as both you and the DMCA want it. Thank you for your counter notification. Unfortunately, it's unclear to us whether you have a valid reason for filing a counter notification. So we won't be able to honor your request. Counter notifications are only used when the con... It's, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. And basically, you can just file again. So please, somebody, for the love of fucking God, please tell me what in the ever-loving fuck was hard to understand about this falls under the fair use exception of copyright law. Here's my name. Here's the URL. Here's the two boilerplate paragraphs. Have a nice day. What part of that is unclear? What part is unclear to them? Hmm? Which part is it? Is it the part where my name is there? Can't be. I mean, it's my name. It's the name on my channel. It's the name I typed in on the forms. It's the name in the signature part of the form. Is it the URL? Well, no. It's the URL for the video. It's, it's that's pretty clear. Uh, is, it, is it that somehow... The fair use exception of U.S. copyright law, a thing that they explicitly say on YouTube, is a reason that you can provide in the text? Uh, gee, I wonder. Is it the boilerplates that I didn't even type on the second one? I literally just checked two boxes, and they fill it in for me. It's that boilerplate. So they wrote that. So it can't be that. So which one is it, goddammit? Is it my name? Is it the URL? Or is it this is fair fucking use? Which fucking one is it? Tell me, please. I would love to know. YouTube, how are you this dumb? YouTube, what is wrong with you? How does Alphabet Incorporated have 100,000 people, some of the brightest fucking minds in the world, and I send in a thing that says, this is fair use under copyright law, here's my name, here's your boilerplate, and they go, oh, that's unclear to us. We can't, we can't tell if this is valid or not. That's, that's unclear. You are somehow... Google has converted 100,000 people that are so smart into one giant can of, we are so stupid. This is amazing. And I'm not the only person who's had this problem. This is a constant thing. This is not just limited to me. YouTube's DMCA takedown response system is broken. It is non-functional. And the worst part of it is that under the DMCA, YouTube actually loses their safe harbor protections if they fail to comply with my counter notification. So technically, apparently, according to the way the law is written, I can sue YouTube for liability for keeping my shit down despite three fucking counter notifications. And the only thing that stops me from doing it is I don't have a million dollars to go after Alphabet Incorporated so they can file continuances for 10 years. And that's basically it. So yeah, uh, I'm definitely posting this all over the place. This is how I feel right now about YouTube not complying with the United States law that they supposedly have this whole system up to comply with. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you people? How are you this fucking stupid? How is it possible that so many smart people can't do something as simple 
as comply with one of the most common laws that YouTube would have to comply with. And the worst part is that once they actually go through with my counter notification, <clears throat> that's basically it. It's basically over. There's nothing else that they have to do. The only thing that could possibly happen is someone file saying that we're going to sue them, so keep the stuff down. They would have to actually show a court filing for that, at which point YouTube's done. Wash their hands of it, shit stays down, pending a court case, done. But no, no, they can't even do what they're required to do under the law. So the question is, who's going to hold them accountable? You know, I think this is a big enough problem at this point. I think I may actually have to contact my representatives about this one. Because if YouTube isn't complying with the DMCA, and YouTube is the third largest trafficked website on the planet, and they don't even comply with U.S. law, which they are bound under, that seems like a congressional issue. And you know, they sure have sent me a lot of letters lately asking me to support Alphabet Inc. Uh, not trying to resist this law that would hold them more accountable for their bad behavior. So yeah, maybe my Congress critter would like to hear about that, and maybe yours would too. Contact your representatives. Even if you have if you even if you have not had this issue, it is a major problem because it means that someone who abuses the DMCA, as Saren Jameson has done, can get away with it as long as YouTube is complicit simply by going, oh do we don't know how to process a request. But I'm going to hold their feet to the fire as much as I can on this. I encourage you to do the same. Thanks for watching. Like, content, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. You know the boilerplate garbage at the end of every YouTube video. Give me money. Go to JodyBruchon.com. Blah, blah, blah. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Fuck YouTube.